find the volume of the region bounded by the plane, z equals 4, and the paraboloid, z equals x squared plus y squared. First, I need to sketch our region. So the plane, z equals 4, we mark off 4 in the z-axis, and then our plane is perpendicular to the z-axis through that point. The paraboloid, z equals x squared plus y squared, take some traces, and then that'll give us a general idea of what we're looking at. I let x be equal to zero. That's gonna be the trace in the yz plane. I have z equals y squared. So if this is my y-axis, then I have a parabola facing up. If we let y be equal to zero, that's gonna be the trace in the xz plane. And again, parabola facing up. If I want one more trace, I'll take x squared plus y squared equal to four. So that's what's happening in the plane z equals four. That's gonna give us the circle of radius two. But it's at the plane z equals four, so it's gonna be this top part of the paraboloid. So this is what our region looks like. Now, if you note, if we project down to the xy plane, so I'm just gonna take this circle here, or this disk, and move it down, we're gonna be interested in this disk later on when we integrate against z. To find the volume, we're doing integral in cylindrical coordinates. So here, our variables are gonna be r, theta, and z. We need to find the limits first. So I take a look at our region. If you note, there's a definite top and a definite bottom. So those are gonna be our limits for z. The top is gonna to be z equals four. The bottom is gonna be z equal to x squared plus y squared. But since I'm in cylindrical, that's gonna be r squared. So z goes from r squared to four. Now, when I integrate in z, the idea is that that takes the z out of the equation. It's gonna move everything down to the xy plane. So it's gonna project down to this disk. Now, what is this disk gonna be defined as in polar coordinates? Well, we're using the entire disk. So theta goes from zero to two pi. And then I note, we already found that the radius of this disk is gonna be two. And since we're using the entire disk, the radius is gonna go from zero to two. So we found our limits of integration. To integrate, we need to know how dx, dy, dz transforms under change of coordinates. For cylindrical, it goes to r dr d theta dz. You should memorize that. If not, here's the picture that you draw. So it's gonna be like a wedge of cheese. We take the tip off, and we wanna know what happens when I have small change in theta, small change in r, small change in z. So here, our small change in theta is gonna be this angle going along the top. Small change in r is gonna be this length right here. Small change in z is gonna be this height. Now, I'll also call the length along the front r. Okay, if I treat this like a rectangular box, it definitely isn't, but if you take the volume of it as if it were, it's gonna give you the correct answer for this here. Now, what do we do? So I have a box, it's gonna be length times width times height. Okay, our length is gonna be dr, our height is gonna be dz, so I just need to know the width. Now, if I'm using this arc here for the width, okay, that's an arc along a circle, the length is just gonna be the angle times the radius. So our radius is r, our angle is d theta, so we get r d theta for the width. When you put all that together, you're gonna get r dr d theta dz. So that agrees with, okay, what you would get if you use your Jacobian formula. Now, the integral. So the only thing we need to note about the integral is you're gonna to wanna to integrate z before you do r. That's because r shows up in your limit for z, and the idea is when I integrate a variable, it takes it out of the integral. So if I did r first, that's gonna leave me with, okay, r as a limit when I integrate in z, and that would be bad. So I do z first, and then I can do either r or theta, it doesn't matter what order. So we'll just go with z, then r, then theta. Okay, we set our limits up. We have our iterated triple integral, and then I have 
or RDZ, DRD theta in the order that I want. So first up, it's gonna be integrating DZ with respect to Z. So the R here is treated as a constant. So we just get Z and then we take the difference in the limits. So I have four minus R squared and then we have the R from before. Next, we integrate with respect to R. So we have a four R that goes to two R squared and then I have an R cubed that's gonna to go to one fourth R to the fourth. Okay, and then there's just a difference. I put in my zero and my two, I take the difference, that's gonna give me a four. Then we're gonna integrate, okay, so the four, everything comes out and I'm just left with, okay, integral, theta goes from zero to two pi of d theta, okay, that's gonna to go to theta, we put in zero and two pi, take the difference, we get two pi, so my answer is gonna be, a pi.